you. How y'all be, man? My fellow hairless makes to the blue sea. It's me. We back, boys. We finally back. After the hiatus, hiatus, no me. It's all over. Return to greatness. You know what I mean? Um, uh, yesterday was wild. I've seen the chapter drop. I was like, drop out. Look, <laughs> to quote my boy, <laughs> if, the, if the chapter is out, then I'm out, man. I'm out. Let's get into it, man. 1054. Glad to talk to some of y'all again. Talked to a lot of y'all yesterday. That was just wild. There was a lot of hours yesterday on the One Piece. But uh, let's get into it. We got the, we open up at the Fire Capital, right? We got Green Bull basically talking about Luffy. You know, his, his, he doesn't have talking to Jutsu, right? But he has this ability. You know, and talking about how rare and, and and important something like that is being to draw people in. So even somebody like Green Bull, right, he he knows what time it is. He knows what plot armor looks like, right? He's like, yo, this guy straw hat has plot armor. I got to go get him. <laughs> but then, of course, my, minus the scabbards that, that couldn't be there, you know, Kenny Moan didn't, didn't show up and we know why the, the other two didn't, but scabbards pull up on Green Bull and I'm like, I kind of didn't even think about that, you know, when all the stuff we were thinking about when we, what was going to happen when we were coming back from the break, scabbards pulling up on Green Bull wasn't one of them, so I, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, but, uh, that ain't gonna work out, right? Like it's it's still the scabbers at the end of the day. They cool, but like I was been saying all the roof piece and entire Wado, man. The scabbers couldn't be Zoro by themselves. We joke about the Kiro Shiro thing, but you know, every time the scabbers did something to Kaido, you know, I kept making that joke, like, look, man, Zoro is not the scabbers. They showed you, you see in the anime right now, every time you seen something that happened to the scabbers when it happens to Zoro, it's not the same outcome. <laughs> but 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 anyway, you know, they weren't gonna just let after everything they've been through, right? They should be dead, right? These guys have had an incredible journey and to finally see their country free and then now seeing a world government official pull up, which they don't really know what that is to begin with, but they have some idea of uh because of how the system in Wano already was, right? So they know this is bad, right? And what Green Bull starts saying is wild, right? Because I was cool, right, with Green Bull being a Akainu fanboy, you know, because you already know how I am about Akainu, Akainu, which, whichever pronunciation you prefer. But y'all know that's my guy. That's top five in the verse on me. I've been saying that forever. You already know what time it is. But... We can't have this, right? This is wild, man. He starts spouting some wild nonsense about, which is interesting, right? Because this, here's the question. Greenville is probably not aware of the annexing of Wano. You would think with him being having an admiral, it doesn't really guarantee him all information, right? Because there's stuff that, that a kind of doesn't even know, quote unquote, that he doesn't know. But with that, that's another story for another day. Um, it's a chance he's not aware that there's a ship that was supposed to be there to help them annex Wano, right? We had the situation with Zunisha, but all of the world government forces didn't leave Wano, right? So if that plan was still in, into play, where's the, is there going to be a conflict with Green Bull being there doing things that he's not even supposed to be there? Because even he didn't even want um, a kind of to even know he's there in the first place. So if he's not supposed to be there, Right, and then you have all this other stuff going on with the annexing of Wano. Supposedly, How do these two conflict to where we see, unironically, <laughs> because they don't have the manpower? And this is just me being a fanboy because I don't think this would happen. But what if a kind of had to go check Green Bull himself? You know, what if what if one of the what if the girl will say, contacts the Kaido. He's like, yo, why is Green Bull in Wano right now? And he's messing up what we need to do. Like on paper, you would think Green Bull would be able to help them. But I'm just saying, 
it's just a con maybe it's a conflict of interest right because there is this thing that people talk about it's been pointed out and it's not again it doesn't apply to every character but quite a few of the characters in the series right you have luffy and zoro katakuri and big mom you know whitebeard with the power to destroy the world marco's marco can heal right where you have this contrast in ability between uh we'll say leader and first mate if you want to say that right again it doesn't apply everywhere but just this does happen quite a bit in the series where it's like well <laughs> technically i mean i get that he somehow beat king and queen who both have access to fire and lasers which that's why i'm very interested in seeing how he deals with yamato who has the power of ice just because i had a crazy theory in my head about Aokiji pulling up and he being the one to fight Green Bull, but I don't need to get right into that now. But I was just thinking from a power standpoint, it would make sense. Like, it would make sense that it didn't make sense to me how King and Queen got low diff. I didn't care about them being tired. It was just like you would think with him being a plant man, having the Mokutan, Mokutan no me, Ale Hashirama, his natural weakness would be fire. But with King, it didn't matter. We didn't see what happened, but we know <laughs> what King's abilities are. We know what Queen can do. Now, I'm one of them people. Y'all already know how I feel about the Admirals. Again, that kind of was the top in the verse, in my opinion. It has been for quite some time. Like, from the moment him and Aokiji had their fight, in my mind, his hockey must have bloomed because of the, the severity of that fight, where I was talking about before, where other top tiers in the verse don't have these opportunities as much anymore and it kind of was very recent up until Kaido fighting right a lot of these top tiers we don't know when they fight and a lot of times they just we assume they haven't you know people get rusty right but it kind is not rusty he was just putting in work at marine four and against aokiji lately against all top tier characters so that was why i used to always bring that up but if you think about it from, from a standpoint of what we got going on here it's just like, man, look, Green Bull, you that dude. And even if you watch the eighth Hokage, right, and, and Yamato being here, which we knew Yamato is unquestionably a very strong character, right? And he was surprised, like, yo, okay, the, the hockey here is serious, right? But I still got Green Bull winning. I just... Again, the scabbards are cool, but what do they really add up to from what we've seen? Like, I'm not saying Green Bull is Kaido, but at the same time, the, the gap probably isn't as far as what you would think. You know, and that's the strongest dude in the verse. You know what I mean? Like, he took, and he still took an L. So, you know, Green Bull looks cool now. And like I was saying before, we even went on break, man. You already know. Anytime Odom lets the Admirals look good, you know some BS is coming. You know, and then we got it with Green Bull and is talking about, you know, um, prejudice breeding stability. is one of the, like, that statement almost sounded like, I'm like, yo, this, is this a line from Schindler's List? Like, what is this? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's one of the wildest statements I think I ever, I, you, you thought who's who was bad. Nah, Oda was like, nah, let me show you an awakened who's who and what that looks like. Here's Green Bull. I'm like, oh, you guys, you got him on this. You know, and how he believed in hierarchies, which I'll get into because of the celestial space helmets in this chapter, but um, how he was speaking of hierarchies and it's just like, Oh, this Green Bull cat is on something else. Like, you're a bootlicker of the Celestial Space Helmets? Oh, no, nah, you can't be wearing knee pads for St. Charles, man. No, no, Green Bull, say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Because, you know, it's one thing, like, the Akainu fanboy thing is cool. And, you know, I like, I, I, I like him myself. And you know, I don't agree with all his policies, but... In a lot of ways, like, Akainu and Garp are, are similar, right? Where you, Garp, he's viewed differently, but he's worked for these same evil people his whole career, right? You can say what you want about the Buster call, but as far as we know, and is is what he, quote unquote, implied would have done to Kobe. But at the same time, Akainu doesn't care about who you are. He only cares about good guys and bad guys, in a sense, from the way he's portrayed. 
He has no issue with good guys. We haven't seen him say anything about anybody doing the right thing. Like, that's not his problem, right? It's just because of who's in power and the politics behind that. But he himself only cares about good guys and bad guys. Green Bull believes in something different, right? Oh, if you're born this way or you're born here and you're this person, you mean this much, right? So that's why I was talking about the Annex and Wano in the first place, because his actions are based on them not being part of a world government country. So he feels like they're lesser people or lesser beings in a sense where he can just do whatever you want because they're not part of the world government. Oh, you don't support our gods? Then you don't exist. I can kill you all. You're all fodder, right? That That's his mentality. That's not an Akainu type of mentality, right? Akainu is just like, you guys are pirates. You got to go. And that's it. There's nothing else to talk about. He doesn't care about all that other stuff. So that's where they're different because Green Bull has actual agendas where it lines up with the celestial space helmets. So if you see Rong Wun with this, he's the type of person they would want to be fleet admiral. Hint, hint, later on in the series. So something's going to happen with here in Green Bull. There's no way to the one. You're not beating the goat with the coat and hailing in from the south side of Shimosuke Village. The stomp I had a song over you. Sanji Vinsmoke, Trafalgar D. Goat or Law, right? There's no way. There's no kid like that. We just saw the only characters that could go one v all against them. They're not in the series right now. So Green Bull, I respect the Admirals and all that, but Akai was probably the only person that I think right now in the Marines who can run that type of gauntlet. It's just not happening, G. Like I said, you can watch the eighth Hokage and and you could probably be Yamato, right? You probably can't kill Yamato, but you could probably, you know, wear her down. Um, Raizo, you never know, because Ninjutsu and, and One Piece has been very interesting, to say the least. So you don't know how that can go. But I wouldn't expect them to be able to beat Green Bull, right? But Green Bull can't go 1v. Like, Luffy plus anybody is an instant L. That's an instant L. I don't care how you want to slice it and power creep and all of that. Luffy plus any other character, that is an instant L. Luffy is not king. He's not queen. He, he's not he's not the scabbards, right? I don't know what happened with the Sabo and Fujitora thing. It's looking real suspect because, you know, Fujitora is a certain way where it's like I could see him letting Sabo escape. You know what I mean? Like, if you based on how you behave and dress up, so you really don't know, right? And then, but Fujitora would have had beef with Green Bull over that, right? Green Bull doesn't seem to be the same way as Fujitora. So it's like the way that they were interacting, it's really hard to tell, right? It could be they just got away, which I don't know how that happened <laughs> based on how we see Green Bull function and one person controlling gravity, even a kind of like, you can tell, you know, I talk about this all the time, right? Where Oda puts statements in there that is basically based on us, right? That was one of them. What did the kind who say? No excuses, man. Because he knew that's something that we would say, right? Like, he knows. If you look at the way he talks in interviews in SBS, he's very aware on what we be on. And there was no way that was going to slide. <laughs> so, But the weird part is when a kind who says no excuses, He's not angry about nothing. He's not, you know, doing the kind of stuff. He just says no excuses and that's it. You think he would have been a little bit more angrier, you know, given the situation. But for whatever reason, that doesn't seem to be the case. But um, no excuses, right? How did that happen? But at the same time, it's just like without context, it's really hard. But it does look bad because you're on home court. And, you know, that those things shouldn't, shouldn't happen. But I thought that was interesting how Green Bull's character went from, you know, and then it made it worse because of the Zoro's dad memes. You already know how I felt about that. And I'm just like, oh, here we go again, man. JD Fraud and the gang, man, are going to have a field day with this. Uh, I was cracking up yesterday uh, over the whole <laughs> Green Bigot thing and, and calling him Goon Bull. Uh, I was dying, like. That was probably one of the funniest things I've seen somebody uh, say in a chat in a while. That had me cracking up. I seen that this morning and, and people was talking about Twitter. I was like, oh, man. That that one had me. That one I thought was funny. A lot of the stuff people say is corny, but that, that one wasn't it. That one, I was literally tearing up. Uh, I, I couldn't breathe over that. <laughs> I was like, man, y'all just, 
this is not good for the Sun Pine and Santo Ryu. So I'm like, there's no way that, 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 that they're related at this point, hopefully, because I don't need that that agenda to continue. You know, it's, it's been quite the trip. <laughs> but anyway, um, his abilities are interesting because he's a low gear. And this is something I've been talking about lately, right? We knew the Devil Fruit powers are going to have to ramp up in some way. And how some of them function, like one of the things that makes Luffy so broken is that, especially now with being a, a mythical zone, he can kind of mimic more than one class because he's still a substance at the end of the day, right? All the other stuff, depending on what substance you are, I've talked about this time and time again, sometimes that like uh, gives you advantages to begin with, right? But also to mimic abilities. And I think... We still don't know if that was just an error on Oda's part that hasn't been explained yet, but the, the statement about special picks from Isia, I feel like it ties into this area of devil fruit ability. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because as much as we assumed his abilities for quite some time, which I'm glad Oda kept it pretty much how we thought it would be, you know, with him being having the Mokuta, Mokuta, Hashirama no Mi, is that he's a Logia. And because he's nature incarnate, right, the power of life, this is, seems like big mom level of ability where, like, it lets him do things that you wouldn't think for a devil fruit of X class, right? Where some of these powers now is kind of like law where they have, I won't say no rules, but you really don't know how he can function. And when he has an ability like this that can stretch out and get to a bunch of different areas, and I just find it hard for a plant man, a forest forest man, to not have access to poisons, right? That would just make sense. Um, I don't know how he would do that, and plus he can take life away, similar to Big Mom, if you think about how he drained everybody when we first saw his introduction um, against King and Queen and those scrubs like Baba Nuki, you know, um... It could get broken, <laughs> you know, don't get me wrong, but we didn't see how fire works against him. I just assume a character that strong would know that's the first thing somebody thinks about. So he has a way around that. And, you know, I don't know, man, I wanna, I'm kind of excited about how he can fight because he does seem to have the type of ability that's very effective against multiple people. He still got this sword on his hip, you know, like. Don't get me wrong, just because I don't think he can beat Luffy plus other people doesn't mean I think he's trash. It's just this is a different game now in the series. So, you know, I just I don't know, man, if he runs a gun like that, he might be a top five, top ten. I just don't see it happening. But um, like I said, him talking about hierarchies kind of brings us into what's going to going to happen later um, when we find out this other stuff, because before then, right. Before then, I guess I'll bring up Momo, too. <laughs> Momo trying to do his thing, but come on, G. We already know how that's going to go. And that kind of ties into the annexing of Wano again because we're falling back on, you know, when Momo's questioning about opening the borders and some of one of the things I talked about, which was true, was, well, your countries will be unstable, you know, and then look what, look what happens. You know, I don't want to, you know, we're not saying, you know, we're not going the confirmation bias route. But at least he had the foresight to think, like, maybe we shouldn't just do this right now just because we got rid of the biggest threat and then another threat shows up. You know, <laughs> it won't be a threat he'll be able to take care of. But, hey, he, he just bit a low gear. So maybe he can't phase, though, similar to Blackbeard or um, Caribou or Aokiji just because of what substance he is. I, I don't see him being able to phase. If he could, that'd just be broken, right? On another note, if Big Mom catch him, he, we might get the seducing woods again. He might just, she might just turn him into the seducing woods. That'd be wild. The internet would never let the Admiral sleep over that one ever again. But anyway, um, Shanks pulls up, right? And that we didn't, I didn't see coming this chapter. Like I knew we would see a panel of Shanks eventually just because of the, that's how the bounty chapters have worked. Um, especially with the gear fifth thing, but we see him now. You know, and he brings up Momo and Hiyori, which is wild, considering he never went to Wano either. But um, <laughs> it's funny that, of course, the deadbeat pirates themselves, this Fuyasa talking about, I'm not ready to see Usopp yet. I'm like, man, this guy is the deadbeat of all deadbeats, boy. Like, <laughs> it is funny, though, that they talked about Kid picking a fight with them. 
And at least it does give some slight, a bit more insight to what that situation was. So it's more like Kid probably really did go after them and not like they ran into him randomly and Kid was just popping off at the mouth and, and had to pay an arm for it. They, similar to whatever his plan was before, he's been probably specifically targeting Shanks the entire series, you know, uh, since, since since we've been introduced to him, that might have been always his plan. It was to go after Yako. The situation with Big Mom was just circumstantial, and it wasn't part of the plan. It's always been Shanks. We just don't understand exactly why um, he thought that was a good idea. But um, getting the flashback of Shanks kind of worries me because... I don't know, man, getting flashbacks with him either means, you know, all those theories about him dying might be true. And that's why we're getting this kind of stuff now. But on the same note, it could be because the shanks that we know, we about to see somebody different, you know, because uh, I don't really care if shanks is evil or not. I don't think he is. It's really hard to tell sometimes, but this chapter did give him some some ominous vibes, right? The way he was talking to Big Beckman, like, well, it's, it's, it's time to claim the One Piece, man. I see that uh, Gear Fifth is in effect. It's that time. But if he knows, does that mean Blackbeard knows too? Is that why Blackbeard? Because like their timing of movement is pretty similar, right? Like something I've always thought about is what if Blackbeard and Shanks, why they have a problem with each other is really just because they have the same goal. Like it's not even nothing crazy backstory. It's just... Shanks wants the same thing as Blackbeard. It just doesn't, his perception is different. You know what I mean? As far as like Shanks, if he's a, a bad guy, that's why him and Blackbeard don't get along. But it doesn't seem like Shanks hates Blackbeard. He just hasn't. And he's just really worried about him, which is, he should have been. If the girls say were worried about people on the level, Shanks is worried about Blackbeard. A lot of issues in the series might have not happened, right? Like we talk about that all the time. Like, not dealing with Blackbeard immediately this is the biggest failure that the world government ever did. Like, this man, I, I don't even want to get into that. But anyway, <laughs> of course, Lucky Rue, I think, was like, yo, let's go see Luffy. And that's when we find out, like, you know, one, Shanks, unlike the rest of his crew, probably knew what the Gomu Gomu was when he stole it, right? He had an idea just because of how dedicated his face look on wanting to make sure he secures that ability and everything he's given up for it and literally his arm so you know he might actually care about Luffy but at the same time this has a purpose and he does know about prophecy and things of that nature so it does make sense but you know like how you guys know I always bring up with law I'm always interested in what Shanks and Law's to me, it's an implied relationship. They've had some conversation that we're not aware of because why else would he would have say Luffy in the first place? And why has Shanks would, would have let Luffy's rival walk away with him in the state that he was in? Why would he do that? That never made sense to me. And it's not something, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, I understand why Law would have interest in Luffy with him being a D and advertised as a D at, and still now, even though he's not supposed to be right until he found out Luffy is not the type of person that would know things like that. But what would that have to do with him saving his life? He wouldn't have to save his life to ask that question. You know, he, there was other ways around that. So it's just always been odd to me that Shanks was just like, oh, you got Luffy and you're out. And then all of a sudden we see Law in the story from the beginning with and his main focus is, is with Kaido. You know, Dofi was just like a part of it because it, even if... Dofi worked for Big Mom, let's just say. <laughs> Law still would have went after Kaido first, right? And took, and then they probably would have went to Whole Cake next, like if the story was written different, based on the way Law says it. And it's just like, we know about the interruption between whatever happened between Shanks and Kaido and the Marine Force, so it's just like, why? Something is there, and it's like, even if you go to Shanks' evil route, then at the same note, Law's probably evil too, and he's in on it. Because if he took Luffy's heart out of his body, more than likely, right, to, to repair him and all this other stuff to save his life, there's a chance Law knew something that we're not aware of, which will lead me into another idea I have about Law modifying Devil Fruits. And I don't think he modified Luffy's, but there's a chance that I'm not saying that you could look at a Devil Fruit user and see what type they are. 
But there is a possibility based on his heart rate and some other stuff where Law thought something was odd, right? Which will fall back on a conversation we had with Shanks, you know, and, and Joy, the whole Joy Boy thing with Willa D. There's a chance that Law might have been aware of what Joy Boy was before we were in the story. This is what I'm saying. And if you think about what his fruit ability is and the fact that he mimicked Corazon, it's like, okay, what if Law modified his devil fruit? You know what I mean? Or again, maybe he knows something about Luffy that because of a conversation with Shanks, it made sense, right? We just don't know, you know, and then because of the whole sword thing, you really can't tell which way it could go with Law. I'm just saying from an information standpoint, it might be a for a good reason why he asked Luffy to team up with him in the first place. And it, may, it really may have been something good because he was aware of stuff like this in the prophecy, just like he was aware of Zoe. He might not know the other stuff, but he was aware of Zoe and all his interest in the pony glyphs and stuff like that. That's why I was like, in some way, I've always thought Law and Shanks are connected somehow. I just don't know how. They don't have to be, but it's just something that always made sense to me. And with Shanks knowing what the gun was going to pretty much was from the start he might not tell anybody and then this whole connection between the color white right with luffy and you know i've talked about this before well the first thing law survived was the the, the amber lead disease right i've been calling him the amber lead assassin forever so that connection is is if it's a color thing because you know the sulong and and, and the fishermen and things like if that's a real thing you know it would be something the law is aware of. That's all I'm saying. I'll get more into that another time. Because uh, <laughs> obviously we got, we want to talk about Saibo and things like that. But it's hard for me to talk about that Shanks and not talk about law. Because to me, and it, depending on which way you go with the story, to me, they, they've been connected. It's just not something that's, that's out in the open, right? But now, like you say, you got Shanks talking about going for the one piece in his eyes. <laughs> You only see one eye, and he just he gets oh, he does this on purpose. I I love it though because it, it makes him um unpredictable on on what about is about to occur. Because Ben Beckman almost looks shook. Like I don't know, man. That that that's a wild panel to me um, to have him behave this way, right? Because and then the funny part is even the newbies on the Shanks crew. Luffy has the lore now, like, yeah, you know, you had the monkey talking about, uh, gorilla talking about Luffy. <laughs> that's, cr excuse me, that's crazy that our, our goat with the coke is talked about like that by, like, random people and scrubs who don't know who he is. How crazy that that be where something happens and, and Luffy has to go to Shanks' ship, right? And he does the same thing that Whitebeard does. You know, and he goes to meet Shanks because he's got to talk to him about something like, yo, don't go here. Don't deal with this pirate. Or, you know, something wild. That would be so dope. And he'd be knocking out people on the way up just like Shanks did. And that gorilla guy would be one of them. <laughs> but um, the craziest part about the Shanks thing, it's not even the other stuff. I'm going to be real with you. Him being at Wano is not that crazy, right? We've We've talked about that before. Um, it is a little suspicious because from a time standpoint and the conversation with the Goro will say, we don't know exactly how much time, you know, that was been, but it seems like that's probably the last place they were was, uh, seeing the Goro say, and now they're here in Wano and that looks a little suspect, you know, uh, you see gear fifth in the paper. Now you're in Wano, but you don't want to see Luffy. We know Pluton is here. That's odd <laughs> that he doesn't want to see Luffy, but it, it does not. Like he says because he doesn't think Luffy isn't ready. He says he's not ready. So maybe there's something he has to do after the Gomu Gomu has been awakened that we're not. I don't know what it is with Shanks, man. I, I'm he's the biggest mystery in, in, in the series besides Dragon. Like I, that is a weird statement to me. That out of all the things going on in the world, right? Luffy was a part of two Yonko being defeated. His peers, right? They're not they're not in the story no more because, <laughs> because of him. Right? Again, omitting my implied uh relationship between him and Law on the side. Um 
Then the next thing you know, right, the world is going crazy with whatever the SSG is. You're at the Gorosei's house. Luffy's awakened now. You have all this crazy stuff in the story. The situation with Wano. He didn't just go to Wano accidentally. They're already going there, which means he probably was aware of what was going on there at the time, right? Because that was said over the Dead Mushi about Kaido and Big Mom's alliance. So he knew about that, right? And him and Blackbeard are taking action at the same time. He pops up at Wano. And his main concern is Barto L M F A O. That's your concern right now. Your main priority because of something Barto did in a in a cover chapter, right? The same flags that are <laughs> that, that Bellamy was making, right? Barto burnt down some of Shanks. That was in a cover story. And that Shanks made his focus? Come on, G. Come on, man. Come on, Oda. What are we doing, my guy? What is that? What is that all about? Like, if somebody can explain to me what that is. How did Barto from the Barto Pirates become... This is the same guy we never know what he's doing in the series. This, this guy was worried about Blackbeard. How do we go from Blackbeard and the Gum Gum with no me and talking about claiming a one piece be like, oh yeah, by the way, I can't do that right now because it's Barto, dog. Like either Shanks is really about his hood, or the only thing I could think of is I had thought about Mike, well, what if Bar what if Barto is like a conjurer kind of thing? Where he actually is not about the straw hats, like how it looks. That's the only thing I could think of and somehow like Barto is tied to Blackbeard, you know, in that kind of way. Then I could understand it. And it's just something that we're not aware of. We'd find out and that would just be crazy, right? If Barto was a Conjuro type. That's the only thing I can think of. Outside of that, I have no idea why Shanks thinks part of Mayo is all of a sudden as a priority over everything else, but apparently he is. So uh, we'll see what's up with that. <laughs> now, the main event. Listen, man, especially when it comes to the anime, when it comes to things that don't involve Zoro, one of my favorite scenes in the entire series. And not even because I thought Ace was that cool. Like, I liked that part of the story, but now it didn't, you know. I liked Ace more from other, for other stuff, like, later on in the story. But at the time, Ace was just, like, I thought it was messed up. But, you know, Ace wasn't, like, my favorite character or nothing. But, um, so I believe the Mary Mary. That's probably one of the dopest scenes, period. Not just in this series, but in general, in my opinion. You know, um, I just really like it. It's one of those things... Well, that in the in the scene when we first get reintroduced to Rob Lucci and, and Kaku and Stussy as Cipher Pole, <laughs> just because he slams the Totana in the ground, and for those of y'all new, remember me back in Dress Rosa, didn't like the Totana. So, but the um the Sabo scenes when just because it, it's funny, you know, it has the Sanji like comedy, the way he let Barto drop to the ground. Oh, huh, what a coincidence, Barto! But um. This is one of my favorite scenes, you know, him saying, I, I, Ace, I take over your ability now. Like, it's one of the few scenes in the series that I can say in Japanese. Like, it's just, I like it. It's a dope scene. And I always thought it was funny that when he first ate, ate the Marimara, that he didn't burn Rebecca to the crisp. And I always had this crazy idea that people who learn hockey before they eat devil fruits are probably, a, like, the learning curve is a bit different because I think they function similarly. You know, because he's sitting there, part of, his, part of his artistic, but he's staring at his hand when he first turns to fire and realize he is fire, right? Um, had there been a different situation, like when he just burnt Rebecca to, to crisps. So, you know, Sabo's been a G from day one and similar to Sanji and Kobe, which I'll get into why this makes sense. Uh, for me, I've always liked their fighting styles and I attribute them to the, the you know, the Rokushiki technique. You know, I always thought that's the type of techniques they would have. And Sabo kind of fights like that. And the funny part about Sabo, right? And people used to argue about this. Who was stronger back in Dressrosa, Sabo or Luffy, even with Gear 4? 
And I used to say Sabo. Now, we didn't know about Rio at the time, but if you think about how much he talks about, uh, if you go back when he's talking about, like, the core of things, when do we hear that again? During the Black Maria chapters, right? When you found out Robin had learned Fisherman Karate from Koala, right? So it's kind of also implied that either Sabo knows Rio based on his fighting style, um, you know, copying Dragon and all that and already knowing about hockey, or it's the possibility Sabo also knows how to use Fisherman Karate, which I wouldn't even be surprised by that. But, you know, the thing with Sabo is he was filthy in dress row, so he couldn't beat Fujitora for obvious reasons, but he was still filthy. Like, him getting away is not that crazy to me. I don't know how they all got away, you know, but their powers are kind of weird. And again, like I was talking about with Fujitora, you know, he's real suspect based on his actions back in Dressrosa. I just don't see Greenville letting him slide. But again, who knows, man? I just, that's crazy that they all got away. And we know he didn't kill Vivi, but I remember Sabo is a little psycho. If you remember back with the situation with Burgess, right? When he was talking about, you know, cracking human skulls like an egg and stuff like that. Like, he hadn't seen Sabo um, talk like that because he hadn't been in the story as an adult. So there's a chance where, I'm not saying he killed Cobra on purpose or he did it. He might have did something, but it has nothing to do with what we're talking about in the newspaper, right? Because that's having an adverse effect. They already had eight kingdoms turn over since... Sabo has been dubbed the Flame Emperor, right? But this wasn't a part of the Rev's plan. It couldn't have been because they didn't know Dragon was going to be assassinated. They were there to rescue Kuma. So it's just like, I don't know if, I wonder what Dragon thinks about this. Because, you know, I, I've kind of called, I won't say Dra Sabo called Dra Dragon's son, but I've been, I always thought it was funny. I always, I've been calling Sabo the breath of dragon you know especially since he got the Marimaras it's like yeah, he's the breath of dragon that's interesting that they hype him up on that level right now just because of a few kingdoms turning over and, and his actions and it's kind of weird because these people don't know that the people of Alabasta aren't bad people so they're more into the concept of somebody defying the world government than the people who are actually being affected. Like, Cobra getting killed for all intents and purposes if you were a normal person who knew about good people. Cobra's not somebody you want dying, right? So they're sitting here cheering about this stuff, not understanding the full context of the situation. And I find that very interesting because, of course, the world government would never thought to have it they never would have thought it for it to go this way, but it doesn't matter because they plan on cleansing everybody anyway, right? So that's why it's kind of odd that they still care about appearances in some ways or fashions. Because usually, from what we've seen, when a group of people are in this position, they'll stop caring about what things look like because it doesn't matter anymore. But they still care about how things are, are viewed, so they can't be totally prepared to enact their plan yet. At least, you know, there's probably some time that they have to wait. Uh, just like the situation with Gear Fifth, you know, and, and Luffy being awake and now things take time. But I just thought that was pretty crazy that I just thought that was a crazy thing to have going on, you know, with Sabo. Like, you guys are hyping him up more than Dragon now, in a sense. But he has taken an action and we haven't seen that in the series. And again, like I was talking about with Big Mom, the Marines and the world government have for all the fumbling and bumbling that they've done throughout the series, every time they're seen on screen by regular people, people always fear them still. They still respect the Marines. You know, they didn't really have that issue. So now they have an issue that we haven't seen in the story where people are, are doubting the Celestials, which I think that's interesting. Like I was talking about Green Bull bringing up hierarchies where we see more of the hierarchy of the Gorosei, right? In a sense, or the Celestial Space Helmets, because <sighs> it kind of brings up, while they're talking about this whole Sabo situation, that God's Knights have jurisdiction over Mejua, which that's not something we've ever talked about in the series. And similar to Sword, it was just 
sword was a little bit more flashy, right? But this sentence seemed like it was just slipped in here. And I don't know if this is a Viz thing. You know, we'll see. I always support the Viz. But this is a very interesting statement to slide in here. Because I was like, wait, is this like a Bleach Squad Zero thing? Or is this something else? Because they use the word jurisdiction. But it kind of says something about that they mediate disputes. Which that sounds like a court kind of thing, and they're called knights, you know. So are they like a judge, jury, executioner for instant messenger sama? Again, this is this is like a squad zero thing, or do you go somewhere and are you judged by somebody who's not the Gorose? Because if we know that now that this Gorose is not, there's been other versions. You have to get into the Gorose somehow, right? They they choose people. So I wonder if we're about to see a group, you know, similar to like a, like I said, Squad Zero or more probably in this sense, like Central 46 or something, or like the the, the Elder, you know, Anbu or something, some Donzo type stuff where we're getting introduced to the faction that we're not aware of that makes decisions on, on how to deal with Celestial Dragons only, right? Because you can't send them to court that doesn't, <laughs> they're not judged by the Marines either. And the fact that it involves something with an, an attempted murder on Charlos and Muriel's guard had the authority to excuse the people that tried to, quote unquote, right, kill Charlos. Right. If we're talking about the incident um, from a while ago, or at if this is not if, if it's that and not something different. So my question is, is Muriel's guard considered one of God's knights or or they is a kind of basically saying is, you know, God's knights were the ones who handled the situation between Mule's guard and Charlos. Because if Mule's guard excused these people who attempted a made an assassination tip on Charlos' life, <laughs> like what happened after that? So you see what I'm saying with that? Is he one of them? Or did the God's Knights say that was okay? So I don't know if they're a judicial system or they law enforcement. Um, so that'll be interesting if we when we get to see what's up with that. Because that this that was crazy for that to be slipped in there. And I think a lot of people think Vivi's not dead, right? Um either Sabo actually has Vivi. I don't know, man. Like I, here's the thing. Sabo is kind of on the psycho side. He's had a lot of trauma, right? Brain damage in a sense when he had amnesia. And again, the stuff he was saying to Burgess was kind of wild. Like he had every right to be talking to Burgess that way, but <laughs> it was still kind of wild. So it's like, ah, I don't know, man. Flame Emperor Sabo, this might not all be a good thing. You know, he might be on some Ginyu side, burn the ash type stuff, <laughs> but it's a good thing um, that Sabo's not dead though, because I or you know we had to save. He had to be saved by either the Rev or I'm glad it didn't turn on that situation to the point where they actually brought back Kuma. Now Kuma, I would think right, he's not normal. You can't have all that happen to you and be normal. So unless he has other orders that we're not aware of, because I find it do find it interesting that for him being programmed the way he was programmed for him to be able to still be freed, he would have had to go along with it because Kuma's ability is broken. They wouldn't have been able to deal with Fujitora, Green Bull and Kuma simultaneously. That wouldn't have worked out. So <laughs> he must have had some remnants of his own will to, to be able to continue. Right. I'm guessing a Vegapunk is the only one that could save him truly if he has to be saved at all. But I am glad he's back in the story because uh, <laughs> he has a broken ability. But um, I think that's pretty much it that I wanted to talk about. It was a lot. It was a crazy chapter, man. It's one of the crazier chapters I think I've ever read. Uh, it was definitely worth the wait. I mean, we got everything. We got everything that I could pretty much ask for. And I don't know where we're going. But I know we got a Flame Emperor Sabo in the building. Flame Emperor Sabo. I wonder where else we're going, though, because the way it kind of mentioned that Alabasta must be in chaos, you know, I think he said chaos. It's something like that, that maybe we get to see what happens. 
what ha- what was going on and are they being cleansed is this being done you know are they starting at the top and going down or are they going to go wipe out people or are they going to do it like what are the means you know because i've always thought part of it would be flood but if they start in this kind of way, especially with some of these countries now are probably going to start taking sides, right? You can't have that many countries de fact <laughs> from the world government and other countries don't think to do the same thing or at least question it, right? Um, that's when I could see things getting ramped up with the aggression because, again, if you don't, there's nothing to hide no more at this point. Um, if you've got countries doing things they've never done in the entire series, and they don't want a repeat of whatever happened in the void century, which they couldn't prevent in the first place, right? So um, it's it is exciting, man. I do expect to see Blackbeard soon, just because we just saw Shanks. So I kind of expect to see... Oh, the other thing with, with, I knew was something I wanted to talk about with Kobe, right? So there's this, you know, I bring up sometimes that how Garp and their kind of are similar, right? Um, it's not really something people would think, but they are. It's just not perceived that way. What if Kobe has to do something that we're not going to like that he had to do to deal with the people of Amazon Lily? And we, who we know they've lived through oppression, right? Um, their whole storyline, basically. Like, yeah, they're free in their own country now, but look what Ball had and Cock had to go through for that to happen, right? Um, I was just watching that fight, like, Three days ago. That's crazy. But um, I don't know how that would be taken. Because the other person people don't talk about is Alkiji still killed Saul. You guys know I bring that up from time to time. So is Kobe going to have to do something that goes against his beliefs for what looks like the greater good? If he hasn't had to do that already. Because from a realistic standpoint... Without some unusual advantage, they have no shot in Amazon Lily. Um, in my opinion, I know Kobe got hands and he didn't upgrade a little bit. You know, he's rocking the bandana still, but you're not finna go in there and wipe up Boy Hancock, dog. That's not happening. Especially we learned about Conqueror's coding now. I, d- I don't want to assume everybody who has Conqueror's knows how to use it in that way, but given how Boy Hancock is portrayed in her fighting style, it kind of wouldn't. It would make sense if. She has that. And if you don't, good luck. Um, even if the metal metal doesn't work on Kobe, them hands will. So, <laughs> but again, is Kobe going to have to pull out Kiji and, and kill us all to complete his mission? You know, is he going to have to pull in a Kainu? Is he going to have to question his own beliefs? Is he going to be in that situation? Um, I don't know if Kobe will ever get that level of character growth. But if we're focusing on the Marines now in a way, I'm assuming we're going to focus on Kobe at some point. And uh, that's the kind of things that I look forward to with him, not just in his fighting style and stuff like that. But he hasn't been in that position yet to have to do something like an Akanyu or or an Aokiji or anyone of that nature or Garp. Right. Because Garp's had to sit there and, and basically watch his grandson get murdered in front of him. So, you know... We'll see, man. We'll, 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 we'll see what's up with that. But that was something I thought about with Kobe. Um, is he going to have to, you know, go outside of his morals in Amazon Lily? Um, depending on how the SSG is used. Because regular manpower, I just don't see it. That's a whole nation of people. And you're out in a calm belt by yourself. You know, good luck with that one. But uh <laughs> It was good, man, talking to y'all. It's been a hot minute. I was like, I, you know, I'm, I have time. We're going to talk a long time because there's a lot of stuff. There's still more stuff to talk about that, that I just am um, going to start rambling soon. <laughs> so this is about as organized as I can be. And thanks for stopping by. Good to see y'all again. I seen some of y'all yesterday. I'll probably see some of y'all a little later on. And, uh. I'm glad that everybody enjoyed the chapter. I know I did. Kind of was fired up. We got the Flame Emperor Savo. I want to see some more bounties. I think that's, you know, next chapter, like I said, I think it's Blackbeard. 
coming to a theater near you. <laughs> Peace, y'all.